Hey guys, EBP Man here, and it's been a couple weeks now that I've had the LG V30, and I wanted to share with you my list of tips, configurations, everything you should be doing to maximize the most out of your V30 experience. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, uh, as the beginning of this video, you're going to find several tips and tricks that I gave in my intro video of the first 10 plus things you should do when you get your V30. Um, I'm going to include a link in the comment area that's going to allow you to jump to the specific section that starts some of the new things. The things that I've covered in the first video are really important and they transform the way you're using your V30 and personalize it substantially. So I'd still consider those, but if you already saw it, you'll be able to skip to the next section. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here into settings and I'm going to give you the first tip. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into general. We're going to go all the way over here to about phone and then in about phone, we're going to do software update. The reason why this is the very first tip is because as soon as I turned on the phone and I did the software update, guess what? There was an update. So if you want to have the best experience with your V30, make sure that you have the most current software and all you have to do is do this check for the update and you notice the last time I checked was uh, yesterday. I'll do a check now uh, to make sure that you have the most current software. Mine immediately downloaded some patches and updated my phone. So the next thing that I would recommend is immediately start using a security feature. Um, I typically like using the fingerprint sensor uh, as my way to uh, log into my phone. And, and that's the first thing that you should do to make sure you have a secure phone. So now to set up your fingerprint sensor, you're going to go into general, fingerprint, and security. We're going to then choose fingerprints. And what we're going to do is hit next. And we're going to set up a backup to the fingerprint. A pattern or pin, I'm going to choose a actual pin uh, that I'm going to use. And it does give you the, the option to require a pin when you turn on the phone. I'm going to say no thanks. So this is um, just in case you lose power. Uh, some people may try to reboot your phone, uh, but it will uh, require a pin before it boots on. It's a good security method or, or process, but I kind of skipped that. So I'm going to hit next and I'm going to enter my pin. Now, as you're setting up, um, you know, there's a couple things that's going to ask you to do about the lock screen since you're going to be setting up the security for the first time. You could either say show all notifications, high sensitive only, or hide all notifications. I'm going to leave it with high sensitive only. I'm going to say OK. Now, the next part is to scan your fingerprint. Now, one thing you have to do when scanning your fingerprint is try to get as, as many impressions as you can. And what I tend to do is I rotate the phone or rotate my hand because when I grab the phone, I'm never going to grab it in the same way. So I want to make sure that the fingerprint gets enough samples. So I'm going to take it off the stand for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, place my finger right here on the fingerprint sensor. And you'll notice as soon as I do it, it starts taking an impression. Um, you can notice that I'm actually rotating the phone as I'm doing it. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm looking to have a different impression. And you notice that the it's telling me right here, please uh, place your phone um, in a different position. So it's asking me to actually do that rotation. So I did that rotation. And sometimes what I'll do is I even add two fingers to it, but it's the same finger uh, with a, uh, you know, just rotated differently. So I'm going to hit OK. And there's my fingerprint. Now, the other thing that you could do when you're doing this is obviously go through the registration process for more, but what you could do is also name that fingerprint so that if there is one of your fingerprints that's not opening up the phone correctly, you know which one it is. So I'm going to say index right, and since that's my right index finger, and I'm now done. Now, now that that's been set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if my fingerprint will work. I'll put my finger on it and it worked perfectly. Very, very, very fast. I would just rotate to make sure that you're getting both this part of your finger, the bottom part of your finger, the top of your finger, and your sides so that you have accurate fingerprint scans. Now the next thing I would personalize on the phone is going to be this area here. Now this hasn't changed, right? So you could do a single swipe to get your toggles. You could do a double swipe, two fingers to get it fully down, or you can do swipe, swipe to get it down. Now first thing, uh, there's things that I don't need at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit. And once I can edit, I can reorganize my screen. So for example, I need my flashlight. My flashlight is important, so I want it at the top. This uh, capture, I'm not going to use, so I'll just put it over here. I don't really need it. Um, and I'll look at what else do I really need. So I got my Bluetooth is there. That's fine. Let's see, is there anything that I'd like to move over here? 
There's data saver comfort view. No, I think I'm good. So I've basically chose I want my Wi-Fi, I want my flashlight, Wi-Fi calling, airplane mode to be on top. And there's other ones that are here at the bottom. And that's another tip. Watch this area because as you install applications, you will get additional toggles. Like one, for example, that will show up is if you install VPN, there's going to be a VPN toggle. So always come back and visit this uh, to, see, uh, to see what's there. So I'm going to hit check, and you'll notice now that it's in the order that I wanted. Now, I'll test the flashlight. Flashlight works. It's giving me the little flashlight notification, so that's good. Uh, some of these, if you press and hold, have multiple functions. So as you can see, when you're looking at these toggles, you can always press and hold and something will come up. All right? So again, nice tip on organizing that area. Now there. the other thing I wanted to share with you is how do you get an always on display? Notice how I have a display here, my phone is on, and this is something that if you see a Samsung user, uh, they've been having this um, as well as other phones are sharing to launch this um, always on, but by default it's off. So let me show you how you turn on your always on display. All right, so to get this to work, we're going to go into settings, and we're going to actually go through a couple tips here. We're going to go into the display. Lots of stuff that we can play with. So first, the uh, thing that I'm going to do is scroll down, and we're going to look for always on display. So you'll enable that, and once you do, you do have the ability to personalize this even further. You could even make it brighter if you'd like. So I can turn this on, and what will happen is it will pop more. Right now it's a little opaque. We'll see how that looks like in a second. Uh, but what you can do is determine also, at night, this may be bothersome for some, so you can actually have a little schedule for that. And then you could also modify the way it looks. So for example, here we have various settings that you can go with. You can go with this color treatment, and then you can personalize it. You can go with something like this that you have on the bottom. Again, um, you can really change this thing up if you like to get a better experience around that uh, display. Now the other thing I turn on while you're under display, I'm going to go into the lock screen and we're going to have a very detailed, um, I'd say, review of all the features that you'll want to work with. But I'm just going to show you the ones that I just do uh, really quick. First thing I like is I like turning on the animation. Um, and I'll just allow that. What this will do is, uh, if it's rainy outside, you'll see raindrops coming up on your lock screen, which I think is pretty cool. And it's just a nice effect. But more importantly here, you have contact information if your phone is lost. So what you could do is, in this area, you can type in um, who to contact as an alternate contact, an email address, um, something that has your name. I have Human Tech Reviews in this area, and when your screen gets locked, it is going to show up on your lock screen uh, uh, in this area here. So uh, again, that's something that you may want to turn on. Now once you've enabled your lock screen, another tip is that you could actually have other things here. Notice how you have, you can turn on Wi-Fi, you can uh, tr uh, manipulate the volume, turn on your flashlight without even having to unlock your phone. Uh, simply by swiping, you have uh, media access control. So this little area is very interactive even though the phone is off. Now still in this lock screen area, another thing that I like turning on is the power key locks instantly. I do this from a security perspective. I, I like uh, making sure that when I lock my phone it is or turn it off that it is locked. So if you power it off it will lock and it will require your fingerprint to unlock it again. So uh, that's another neat feature that you can turn on. Now still under the display area uh, another thing that I change is my buttons. I use a lot of different phones and I really like the back button to be here, home button here, and the multitasking there, but by default it's flipped. So if you go into the home touch area, here you can change the way the buttons are set up. So you can um, manipulate this simply by dragging and changing the order. And it happens in real time. If you notice this here on the bottom, as soon as I move it over, it changes as well. So this is how you can reorganize things. Now you could change some of the icons completely by the things that you see here and replace them if you want as well. Now the next tip still in display has to do with font size and the screen resolution on this is a higher resolution so you may notice that the, the fonts may be a little bit uh, smaller. So what you could do is just change those to so go from a medium, so this is what a medium looks like and that's the default, uh, to a small, right? if that's what you'd like, or you could go to an extra large, and what it's going to do is just make it easier to read. Um, and again, this is all about personalizing it to your taste. Now still not leaving display, the other thing I would do is I would turn on Comfort View. And Comfort View uh, adds a blue light filter that will make things easier to read. So I'm turning it on, I'm going to turn it off so you can see that on camera. It changes. So there's a tint that is added. Uh, what this does is at night, uh, you won't be the person that's lighting up the theater or wherever you are. And if you're in the bedroom, just uh, reading your phone and the lights are off. Uh, what it does is it also helps with uh, your ability to go to sleep. 
Uh, and if you've ever turned on the phone and it's kind of blinding, this comfort view helps uh, really negate that. Now, over here, you'll notice that there's a schedule. What I do is I use this schedule when I'm using comfort view uh, to say at what time of day do I want it to turn on. So this happens automatic for me without me having to do anything to the phone. So I would turn that on. And then what you can do is you can adjust it by using this slider to say how much um, tint do you want? How comfortable do you want to be in order to do this? Now, in many cases, some folks have even gone uh, to the point where ins they installed a third-party app to do this. You don't have to do that anymore. Now, the other thing you can do is you can turn things black and white. This is a, a tip, too. Sometimes if you're low on battery, I'll turn this on uh, because it extends the battery when you don't have that color. So, just something to know. Now, one other change that you can make to help with um, the larger resolution is working with display size. So this is what the normal icons look like, but what you can do is actually make them larger. So again, depending on how your experience is with the phone, you could either make it bigger or you can make them smaller, like we'll make them right there, so that you can have more icons on the screen. Regardless of what your needs are, you can really adjust the screen to suit your needs. Now here's another neat tip also. Uh, this is really cool. You notice how you have this thing right here? It almost looks like Samsung's edge display. Well, when you tap it, uh, what you get, and let's do, let's bring this out. You get this little menu that comes up. Uh, these are shortcuts. And as you swipe, there's a lot of different shortcuts that you can um, use on the side. This could be your contacts. This could be various settings. So if you go into the settings area, these are all the things you can have. You can turn on screen capture, music player. You can have quick contacts on here on this floating bar. So let me show you how you turn on the floating bar so you can get access to the little floating bar that you can have anywhere on your screen. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go into general, and then I'm going to come down here to floating bar. You'll see I have that on. Once you go into it, you'll be enabling these features, and then you'll have that little bar, as you can see right there. It doesn't really bother. It's nice there, and you can access uh, a series of things. Now, as you work on shortcuts, let me show you what else you can do. You can actually modify these, and you could add more. So by clicking on that plus sign, you can choose any app that's on the phone to be part of that floating bar. Now, there are times that you may have a misbehaving app or you're just doing a lot on your phone and your phone slows down. Well, LG has a optimizer. I'm going to tap this right here. And what it's doing is it's optimizing your phone. I did a double tap in that case, but uh, once you do a single tap, it just optimizes. Uh, this optimization is going to go through looking at your storage, looking at your memory. You can uh, really look at various things to just you know, get things to speed up. But this shortcut right here, when you tap it, if your phone is going slow, it will clear out your memory and make things snappy again. How do you get it? Let me show you. So all you have to do is press and hold on the home screen. And then what you're going to do is go into widgets. And as you go into widgets, you'll see smart cleaning. So it's right there. All you'll do is press and hold, drag it where you want it on the screen. And now you have that uh, optimization feature that's going to keep your phone running snappy. Now, the other thing that may be driving some of you nuts is that you'll notice that there's no app drawer. The app drawer is where you uh, would swipe down in some phones or what you would do is um, have a little button on the side that you would open up where you get all your apps everything now on this phone is on screen uh, so if you're one of those that would like to go back to that you could actually uh, press and hold on the screen go into home screen settings and here you can select your home type so you can say I want a home and the app drawer uh, I could just go with home as you have it right now. So it's going to have a combination of both. And that's what you find in like Samsung, for example. So let's go ahead and choose that for a second so you see what's going. So now things have changed a little bit, right? You notice I have the center button. So now the center button, I have all my apps here. But I also have apps here. So this gives you the ability to tuck some things away. So if you'd like to have that app home setting uh, option, all you have to do is, again, press home here go into home screen settings and then you do your home type i'm going to go back to the home function and you'll notice it goes back to how it was again with the camera in the center and then all my apps are here i don't have a lot of apps but if you do install a lot it's a great feature to use the next thing that i'm going to show you has to do with again still with personalization to make the phone yours so we're going to go into home screen settings and here what you can do is work with your grid now your grid is about how many icons are on the screen and you can have a five by five or four by five or four by four. Right now it's in the maximum. So you can have five rows by five icons. So that's going across and down. You can make it smaller or you can vary it. And that's just going to change the way your experience is on the screen. So that may be something that you may want to do as well. 
All right, guys, so that's it. That's all you have to do to personalize your phone. At least those are the first tips that I would personalize. Now, over the next couple days, I'm going to have a full review of more tips and tricks, very in-depth, detailed with indexing so that you can jump to the tip that you're looking for. But if I was you, make those changes, and you're going to enjoy your phone even more. So now let's go ahead and start out with some basic things, things that you may have not taken the time to try uh, with your V30. So let's look at the first tip. So now, um, as you know, with your V30, there are not many apps. Uh, it's pretty basic, the install, when it comes to uh, applications on the V30. However, there are several nuisance apps that I would call that you may want to remove, especially those that are coming from AT&T. For example, you may not care about the DirecTV remote. You may not care about um, a lot of these things. So how do you get rid of them? All right, so the first thing you can do is you're going to find the app that you want to delete. So I'm going to choose DirecTV, and I'm going to bring it to the top here, and I'm going to choose Remove. Now, I'll say Delete. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and basically what this is telling you is that there are some app, there's an app trash uh, drawer that you can go back to to recover an app if you deleted it by mistake. And we're going to hit Clear. So now we'll go back, and you notice it's not there. Let's go ahead and get rid of the driving mode. I just don't need it. And you'll notice there is nowhere to, draw, to, to drag it. I can't put it anywhere. And that's because this is one of those apps that cannot be deleted. Let's go over and look at another one. I'm going to do the DirecTV remote. There's a removal up there. See how you said delete? And I said delete. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to continue to do this and get rid of all the apps that I'd like to. Now you'll notice that some of these apps we weren't able to get rid of. We didn't have the delete function. So I'm just going to show you what you do. You're going to go into settings. Uh, let's just look for the app section. So I'm going to type APPS for apps. And if you look at this area, this gives you a hint of what's going on. You do have the ability to choose enable or disable. And that means that by disabling, if you can't remove them, you'll just make them disappear. So we're going to do that. So we're going to look for uh, one that we'd like to disable. So I'm going to show, eh, we'll go ahead into this one. at t Remote. Notice that it's already uh, disabled. So we're going to go ahead, or it's not disabled. I can't disable that one. Let's go ahead and look for another one. So you notice these two, it says that it's disabled. Uh, there were some other AT&T to drive mode. I can choose Disable here. And OK, that's gone. All right, now if I go back, it says that uh, it was uninstalled. I don't know why, but you see how it's gone back. It's, it's gone here. So let's see if there's one for Setup and Transfer. So we're going to go back here. We're going to do Apps again. Oops. And then we're going to look for that Setup. They should be alphabetical, so I'm just going to scroll down to the S's. Set up and transfer, and I'm going to disable it because I don't want it there. And you know the experience is a little bit different. It didn't say anything. You did see that there was an enable there. So let's go to the screen again and look at how it's gone. So you could go through and do that with many of the apps. Just go in, either disable it or install it just by dragging it to the top. If you don't see that option, you'll have to disable. Now the next thing is all about folders. You'll notice that we have a folder here and it's pretty easy to create folders and what we're going to do is we're going to drag a couple of these out of here so that we can create a, uh, a folder. All right, So let's go ahead and come back in here. I'm going to take the device help, put it somewhere over here and you see it there. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the uh, smart Wi-Fi. Move it out. And one of the things that you'll notice that because there's only one item here, since I took out those two, that folder disappeared. Now, if I take an item and I put it right on top of it, it's going to create a folder. Uh, again, to remove it from the folder, all you do is press and hold. Uh, to put it back together, all you do is drag it in. Uh, there aren't really many features here with the folders. All you could do is name the folder and change the color to whatever you'd like it to be. And you're pretty much set to go. But literally, if you just want to group things or ungroup things like we're doing right here, all you have to do is do what I just did. Now, before leaving the home screen, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the home screen itself and some of the configurations that you can play with. So first of all, by pressing and holding the screen just like I did, you're going to come to this area that's going to give you the ability to do various things. First of all, you notice that there's these X's all over the place. Well, you have these widgets that you can remove just by tapping on the X. So this is a quick way, instead of cleaning up one widget at a time to just go to kind of like a global view and clean out all the widgets and applications that you want to get rid of. And you notice here's another one that has like a little X on it. So uh, that's a, a quick way for that. The other option that you have is you can redefine your home page. So you'll notice here at the very top how there's a little home uh, filled in icon. If I tap here, 
that makes this page the home screen. So it gives you the ability to now say, this is my home, and I can swipe to the left to go over here, swipe to the right to go over here. And I can redefine this at any time. So I can come over here and define this as being that page. So a lot of flexibility when it comes to configuration. It's also an area where you can define your wallpaper if you'd like to. And as I had mentioned in my previous video, the LG V30 screen is a really, really good screen. Unfortunately, the colors themselves that you have uh, really don't, on the wallpapers that they have, are very pastel. So it doesn't really uh, accentuate the power of the screen. So definitely look at changing that. Now the other thing that I wanted to highlight here is your widgets. Uh, lots of different widgets that you can work with. Uh, things that are just going to create shortcuts and personalize things and really maximize the use of your uh, phone. Now one thing that is not highly uh, communicated is the fact that your phone, the V30, has an FM radio. So here you have the ability to select a tuner. So you can do either or. I'll choose the bigger one. And then I'm going to drag it where I'd want it on the screen. I'm going to put it here at the very top. Now, what this is going to require for you to do is to have a headphone jack connected to the phone in order to maximize the use of the, of the FM radio. Now, let me explain one thing about this. The FM radio is does not require internet. It does not require again, a, a data connection because it's using a built-in radio that is part of your phone. And it's using the standard app. What's kind of sucky about this is that LG chose with this version not to include a headphone. And the headphone serves as the antenna. So you plug a headphone in and then you basically you know, turn on your radio, right? And then notice that says plug in a headphone. And then it's going to give you uh, free uh, radio capabilities. Very critical for times when you're trying to have a device that you can use for an emergency purpose like what's going on in Puerto Rico, where there's no internet, there's no uh, data. An FM radio is going to tell you about FEMA drops. It's going to tell you about all these different things. So check out the FM capabilities as well. Now, the other thing I want to show you is you see this from Samsung, LG does the same thing where all their icons are kind of shaped the same and those icons that really don't have the shape to kind of get a fill to give that shape where everything is squared. You may not like that. So we're going to go into home settings. Uh, we're going to go into, notice where it says rounded square icon shape. So we're going to choose icon shape and notice how this is how it's rounded right now. If I choose original, notice how they lose it. Do it again. See that? I like this view. So I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to go back home. It's going to repaint things for a second. But now all my icons don't have that shape. You'll notice here in the Play Store it went back to the normal. So you could change that if that's something that you'd like. Now as you'll notice, I have three pages on my phone. How do you get another one? Let's say you wanted to organize things a little bit different. So all you do to add another one, because you didn't see that on the other screen that I was in, is you press and hold, and you drag over to the right or to the left. Um, in this case, I'm dragging over to the right, and I have now an extra page. If I want to get rid of that page, I come back over here, drag it over here, and now notice it's gone. So some implementations of this, you had a little plus sign that you would hit to add the page when you went into this screen over here. Right? But you don't have to do that because it's pretty intuitive. All you do is drag to the area that you want it and it'll add it, remove it, and it will remove automatically. Alright, so that's everything that we're looking for on the screen. Let's take a look at what's happening here in the toggles area. So you'll notice if you do a two finger swipe, you're going to see all your toggles. If you do a single finger swipe, you'll get one row of toggles. Well, if you do it one more time, you're going to get a next one. Now, uh, a couple of things that I would encourage you to, to really play with. Uh, first of all is this uh, Hi-Fi Quad DAC. One of the things that sets apart LG from all the other phones on the market is its audio quality. And I have to say that the audio quality is absolutely fantastic, especially if you have some high-end headphones. So once you plug in your headphones, you'll want to turn on that Hi-Fi Quad DAC so that you can really see the difference or hear the difference. Um, in my opinion, it's like going from 720p to 4K. Think about that experience when you're when you're watching TV and you go and look at a 720p TV or you go like to Best Buy and you see how everything is so vivid and it pops. Well, that's what happens when you use this Hi-Fi Quad DAC. The, just the audio is so much more immersive, especially if you have really good headphones. So make sure you take advantage of that and you'll notice it tells me that I need to have headphone in order to, to take advantage of it. So going back to everything that you have here, uh, all these icons can be modified. So I can uh, hit the edit button and you notice that there are more icons here available. Uh, if you add a VPN, you're also going to have icons here. So some apps do add toggles. So as you add 
apps, check your toggles out because you may have a new toggle. Now, everything that you see here, you can reorganize. I already showed you that in the previous video, but I just wanted to talk about, uh, again, just that finger swipe and double swipe that we just saw. Now, moving into the settings area, let's talk about settings. Now, there's a couple things that you could do. You'll notice that your settings are broken up into uh, kind of categories or groups. You could change that to go into a list mode or mode and that means that everything is going to be listed down some people like that because they don't like switching from tab to tab it may be useful especially if you're not familiar with the screen and it just gives you the ability to see everything in one uh, swoop the other thing that you have is a search and I use search a lot and you know I use a lot of phones like typically know where things are but I find that it's a lot faster so you saw me earlier as I was looking for apps just type in app and it's going to search for anything that has the word app it's like a global find not just apps but things you notice how it says tapping so it's a, it's a global finder search capability definitely use that when you're trying to find a setting now there are a couple features here that are, are pretty neat uh, when it comes to uh, configurations. So we're going to start with the very first group. Since I have it in list view, it's going to start like this and we're going to work our way down. One thing that very few people take advantage of is the Bluetooth. And now this is what's so cool about Bluetooth 5.0. The Note has this, the V30 has this, and uh, we're seeing more and more phones starting to adopt this. Uh, the G6 had this as well. You tap on this and you notice how you have this that's going on here. Well, what you can do with this phone is listen to music on a speaker. So imagine you're with some friends and you have a party going on and you have your phone is playing Pandora, Spotify, whatever it is, and you get an incoming call. How annoying is that when your phone is over the speaker? Or same thing could happen in your home. But what you could do is with this version of Bluetooth, you can separate what goes where. So you can say to the speaker, not the headphone, to the speaker, I want the music to be playing. And then you can say for the phone, if you do get an incoming phone call, you can say I want it on the handset. That way no one ever hears your text messages coming across, you know, the ding, ding, ding as you're listening to music or anything else like that. So this is something that's pretty cool that you, um, it would be great if you um, knew about and used. Now another neat thing um, as you're experimenting with a lot of the functions, there may be something that you're afraid to use because you don't know what it does or how to go through it. We're going to go up here, and you'll notice that there are several things here. One thing that is overlooked, and I think it's a great feature, is the interactive tutorial. This interactive tutorial is going to walk you through how to set certain things up. So if you see a feature, you're not quite sure how it works, launch that and notice. Tap search to find your Bluetooth. And hit search, and then it gives you the next step. Tap on the name of the device that you want to pair with, and then you just do that and then you hit OK. So it's going to walk you through that entire process. Now the next function that you may want to look at, even though a lot of people have unlimited data, I, I find that unlimited data is no, or using this feature of data manager is no longer about the data management but more about if your phone is draining and you're trying to figure out what's going on, you may want to go into the data manager because data manager is going to tell you which one of your apps are consuming the most data. And sometimes that app that's consuming the most data is most likely the app that's also consuming your battery. Now, depending on who your carrier is, um, in some cases, as you're using your home Wi-Fi, your uh, carrier may be tracking uh, or limiting how much you can use Wi-Fi at home. So I just want to show you something you can actually turn on show Wi-Fi usage and by showing Wi-Fi usage you'd see how much Wi-Fi your device is consuming versus how much it's using you know, over the air data. So this is a nice little option. You will only see this Wi-Fi section if up here you enable show Wi-Fi usage. Now all of us may have a challenge making calls from our home depending on where we live. If you are in a multi-unit apartment building sometimes you find that if you're in a garden apartment or basement apartment that data comes really difficult as well as phone calls and if you have home Wi-Fi then one of the things that you could do is uh, make calls and send text messages over your Wi-Fi this is a great way to uh, really make sure that you don't miss a call and again uh, most carriers are now supporting this so don't forget to use this feature you can turn it on here or you can turn it on through your toggle because there's a toggle for Wi-Fi dialing as well. Now more and more of us are starting to use our phones our cell phones as our primary phones and another feature that's in this call area is call blocking and decline with message. Uh, definitely as you start getting these uh, I would say unsolicited messages you can look at uh, a blocking numbers so you can uh, block numbers uh, that you would want that are coming in you could also have a digital filter so that means that if you typically don't get calls from Kansas City 
and you're getting a lot of spam calls, you could uh, here start putting filters that are based on specific digits uh, that start a phone call. The other thing that I'm not really a fan of is this uh, private numbers. Private numbers are typically also spams or people who are trying to call you. So what I do is um, I enable this feature so that all private numbers I just reject. If you really are my friend and want to talk to me or know me, your number wouldn't be blocked or private. So why even bother? So you can enable that feature as well. Now, last week I was at a wedding, and it was funny because there were several people there at the wedding that were taking pictures. And as usual, you want to share pictures. And what you get is, can you text that picture to me? Can you email that picture to me? And I said, well, why don't we just share? And they looked at me and they said, what are you talking about? Well, let me show you. Uh, all Android's phones have this capability. And, but in order for it to work, you have to have NFC enabled and you have to have Android Beam enabled. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to take two phones. It doesn't matter what brand they are. This could be Samsung, it could be an LG, it could be an HTC, and it could be a Google Pixel. If it has NFC capabilities, you can bring them together and then you can share the picture uh, wirelessly. And they're going to get the high res version. They're not going to get one that's been kind of um, dumbed down or something that's gone through your email. You just tap and go. And, you know, one of the comments was, hey, that's like bumping. I go, I guess if you want to call it that, it was an old term, but for sure. So make sure you have these two on because what you can do is uh, just uh, tap and share your photos. You can f share files. You can share whatever just by tapping as long as what you want to share is on screen. So literally, you bring up the photo that you want and the other person just has their phone in their hand. If you both have NFC and Android Beam on, when you tap, your, uh, your screen would uh, invoke a file transfer of that photo and then they would get it. And don't worry, they're only going to get one photo, the one that you had on your screen. All right, so here's another area that I wanted to share with you, and this is about printing. Uh, most of us may have a printer at home, and you tend to go to a computer to print, but you can through your phone. So what you'll want to do is go into that Share and Connect section and then go into Printing. And here you'll notice this is Cloud Print On. Well, if you choose Add a Service, you can actually install any uh, printer uh, brand that is available on the market today that supports wireless printing. So you notice here that you have HP, you have Samsung, you have Canon, you also have Epson, which are you know the major brands. So literally all you would do is choose the printer that you have, the brand, and it will be added as a plugin that as we saw right here. So where you see uh, cloud print, you'd see that brand there. So next time you connect to your Wi-Fi and you want to print, you can print from your phone the printer is going to be available and your documents are going to print just like if they were coming from a computer. You just have to add that printer uh, brand here as a print service. Now if you do use your phone as a hotspot, here's something that you should consider. So we're going to go into tethering and I'm going to go into mobile hotspot, right? So we're going to go ahead and use this. Now you'll notice a couple things. First of all, let's take a look at the setup mobile hotspot. Now, pretty straightforward, this is what you would name your, your hotspot. And the neat thing about this is unlike Apple, Apple, uh, the iPhone, the name of your hotspot is the name of your phone, which is, I think, very intrusive to privacy because if your name is what you call your iPhone, then you're going to see your name out there, hotspot. So I like changing the name to whatever I want. Second, uh, you can turn, turn on broadcast your SSID or have it private. What that means is that this number, or this name will not show up. Only people who know what your Wi-Fi is will get it. And most companies do not broadcast. They keep it private, especially since they don't want hackers and whatnot getting into it. Uh, your password, let's, let's keep on going. Uh, here's an area that I use, and it's very much underused. 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz. Now, older, older laptops and older technology can only operate at 2.4. And because of that, most wireless networks everywhere, at the airport, you name it, wherever you go, and there's Wi-Fi, are using 2.4, which means that there's going to be a lot of noise. This is like chatter going on, and it's going to make your internet connection slower if you're connected to your phone via hotspot. I've literally had a laptop sitting right next to a phone, and the internet connection has been pessimal. And simply by changing it for 2.4 to 5 gigahertz, all of a sudden things are much faster. Now, switching between 2.4 to 5 means that you get uh, a broader, I would say, band with when it comes to connectivity and speed, but it does suffer when it comes from distance. It doesn't penetrate walls that well. So that's a trade-off. But my scenario is, you know, you're at the airport, you're at the beach, you're at the, you know, at the park, uh, and I would choose 5 gigahertz because there's going to be less competition.
right? And then here, you know, you just leave, these are your bands, I'd leave it at auto select. But that's a tip uh, when it comes to hotspots. Now in the sound area, you can configure your sounds and you can play with things, but I'm gonna show you about notifications. Uh, do not disturb, one of my favorite, favorite features. Uh, what you could do is you can enable a do not disturb schedule. So by turning it on, use do not disturb, and then you can tell it on the weekends and on the weekdays from what time to what time do you want not to be disturbed. So in this case, we're saying, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to get text messages. I don't want to hear any notifications. My phone is quiet. Same thing you can do for the weekend. Uh, what you can also do is set, um, you know, set a certain priorities. So you can override these features by saying, I will accept calls from your son, your daughter, your mother, your father, your girlfriend, whoever it is, right? You can choose who you want to override. So I can keep my phone quiet. And I've had this happen sometimes even with my brother. Well, why haven't you picking up why haven't you picked up the phone? Oh, because I had my phone on mute. Uh right. So do not disturb. So use a do not disturb feature, but then allow those people who are close to you to get in contact with you using these features. Now the next thing I would uh, highlight are themes. And you'll notice that I'm skipping some things because they were covered in the earlier video um, that is part of the series. So I'm going to jump into themes. And what I like about themes is that it really allows you to uh, first of all, just download and make your phone look differently. The neat thing about Android in general, it's all about not being the same. So unlike Apple, where all Apple iPhones are the same except for the wallpaper, with Android, you can change the icons. You can change so many things. So all you got to do is choose what you'd like. And notice this is what's been selected and what you've been seeing and or download some new ones to have a different experience so if you're somebody who likes lilac and you want a lilac background and everything to be like lavender you just choose it if you like someone who likes a black background you just choose it so personalize your phone just by choosing these themes and again these themes are just going to transform the way you use your phone many are free but there's also some that you can now pay the for. other area that you should consider is smart cleaning and smart cleaning is going to allow you to optimize your phone we in one of the shortcut videos that you saw earlier in this series uh, would have seen that you can add a little shortcut that's just going to keep your phone uh, performing fast, reducing clutter, and there's several areas that you can go through. You can do look at battery uh, type performance to see what apps are abusing the use of battery. Uh, you can go into this battery saver, and the battery saver is a great feature to use, especially if you know that you're going to go somewhere where you're not going to have connectivity to charge your phone. Notice 46 hours, 60 hours, 97 hours. That's great battery life. Uh, depending on what you choose, what it's going to do is it's going to reduce the processor, it will change the brightness, right? It will maybe turn things uh, black and white. It all depends on what you choose and how you can, you know, your option. But fantastic. Think about having 92 hours worth of battery life. And um, if I'm in a building that has poor Wi-Fi, I'll, I'll go into the battery saver. Why should I have my phone struggling and just eat up the phone battery because it's trying to connect? Now, another thing you can do, and I appreciate this from LG, um, a lot of phones have these features, but you have to know kind of like a pound, pound command on your cell phone. Well, they have the test configuration here where you can actually test things to see, hey, what's going on with my phone? So you can test your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your proximity sensor, light sensor, all these things, uh, or test them all without having to know any specific commands just to see if there's something wonky going on with your phone. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is, and some of these things are pretty basic, so I'm going to skip these right here, but I'm going to talk about Smart Lock. Now, Smart Lock is a great feature. Let me go ahead and put in my password. Now, Smart Lock is going to allow you to keep your phone unlocked when it's meeting a certain criteria. So uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the options. Uh, you have on-body detection, means it's unlocked as long as it's on your person. Trusted places, eh, this one I don't use. This one you could want to use. Well, this means that if it's in your house, your phone will be unlocked. Uh, trusted devices is what I use the most. I don't use trusted voice. The voice is if it hears you, it stays unlocked. I like trusted devices. And what trusted devices allows you to do is if you're on a run and you, you have a Bluetooth headset, it's going to say if the headset is connected to the phone, I'm going to trust it and remain unlocked. If I am in my car and my connected to the Bluetooth of my car, I'm going to remain unlocked. If I'm using a watch like this from Samsung and I'm connected to the phone, 
and it's a trusted device, it means that it will remain unlocked. And this saves a tremendous amount of time. If you need to grab your phone because you got a phone call coming in or you need to swipe something, you don't have to worry about unlocking it because it's in that trusted area. So as you add Bluetooth devices to your phone, it's automatically going to ask if you wanted to add it to a trusted device. If you skip the part and you want to go back to it, all you have to do is look at any device that you have a Bluetooth relationship with and then connect it that way. Now this is not a performance tip um, or anything like that, but this is really going into just fun stuff. I really like the weather animation, and the weather animation is on the lock screen. So if it's raining wherever I am, I like my screen, the lock screen, to have like water on it. Um, it you can enable that by saying show animation. Yep. Let's cancel that. Show animation and the animation will just show up on that screen based on what's going on. The other thing you can do is you can put contact information. We talked about that in the tip. Um, and here you would uh, could enable also to lock your phone instantly as soon as you turn it off, especially if you're using this for work purpose. Now the next area here is uh, also a cool area, especially if you like to have personal experiences depending on where you are and what you're doing. Smart settings. So what you could do is select what happens when you're at home, when you're away from home, when your ear uh, buds are plugged in or when you connected via Bluetooth. So for example, you could say, you know, if um, I'm home and you put your address here, I want my sound profile to go on vibration mode. Uh, I could turn off my Bluetooth. I can enable my Wi-Fi. You know, you could just configure things, these rules to take place. Because for example, when I get home, um, I may want to turn on my Wi-Fi so that I'm benefiting of the Wi-Fi connection in my house because it has better connection and I don't want to use up my data. So that would be one example. You get to your home, Wi-Fi is off during the day because you're not connected anywhere, but then the Wi-Fi turns on as soon as you make it home. Same thing would happen when you leave. You just say, when I leave the door, disable my Wi-Fi because I don't want my phone searching for Wi-Fi and dealing with that. And then here, you can determine if you connect your headphone to, to the phone, what do you want it to happen? Do you want it to open up Spotify? Do you want it Pandora? Do you want Google uh, or YouTube Red? You can do that. So check out these settings because they're really cool and they really transform also the way you use your phone. Now let's look at the uh, power area. And in the power area, the feature that I use the most is showing the battery percentage on the top. See how I have 30%? If I press this off, it goes away. You turn it on, you turn it on, and you can see it. So that's the, the feature that I use the most. There are other things in here like uh, power saving excluding apps so that you can select uh, you know, which apps uh, to exclude from battery saver so that you have the best performance. That's something you can play with. I really don't use that, but uh, I do use the percentage one. Now, more and more of us are starting to use um, Android Pay, Apple Pay, or Samsung Pay. The LG does support Android Pay, and what you can do is just make sure that you enable it uh, and that it's the default app so that if you go to a place of purchase and they have the NFC enabled, you can use Android Pay to make the payment at that spot. Now here's a tip for parents that hand their phones to their children to play. And sometimes they could be sending text messages to people that they shouldn't and photos that you don't want sent either. <laughs> so uh, take a look at this. So we're going to go into security. And once we go into uh, security, we're going to come down to uh, screen pin. What screen pin is going to allow you to do is put your phone in a specific screen and it will not allow you to move off that screen unless you enter the pin. Great for handling this phone to a toddler and then, you know, pretty much having uh, no control over what that child is doing. Or even uh, sometimes you have friends that are like toddlers too. So you may want to, you know, put this, this function on, turn it on, and then when you give them the phone, the phone is locked in one area. So if it's gaming, it's gaming. If it's movies, it's movies. If it's pictures, it's pictures. But it gives you the ability to control what's going on. The last thing on. we're going to cover is the shortcut keys. Shortcut keys allow you to do some fun stuff. So for example, if you want to open up quick uh, apps quickly, you can basically uh, turn this feature on and uh, you can do a screen capture by pressing the volume and up key twice. So you do it twice and then it does it. You can start the camera by pressing the volume button key down twice. And all you do is tap it twice and it starts. You can turn that on or off in this section. So guys, that's it. I hope this helps you maximize the use of the V30. I really think that the V30 is an underappreciated phone. I wish LG did uh, more marketing. I wish they did really looked at the timing of the release of their products because you know it's being overshadowed by the iPhone 8, iPhone 10, 
uh, also you know the uh, Google Phone Pixel it's overshadowed also by the uh, Note 8 uh, which by all means there are also some great phones but you really um, are missing an opportunity to really consider this phone because one thing that we not talk about and we'll talk about this in a separate video is the camera and I just wanted to highlight the camera on this phone the features and the functionality are absolutely fantastic there are two things that this phone has I think that are staple for the V30 line one fantastic audio with that DAC capability that I asked you to experiment with with headphones and two the actual camera itself uh, it has some very unique features. It has a lot of uh, pro type tape type capabilities that many people don't know about because it gets overshadowed by all these other uh, solutions. So stay tuned for um, a video on camera settings and things that you can do with the V30. Uh, but I would consider it it's a strong contender in the cell phone space, but just really um, under marketed. So if you have any comments or tips that you'd like to share, share it in the bottom area below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.